and thanks everyone for coming to my talk. And let's begin. So I will talk about my constructions. And I constructed exotic four manifolds, and they also have simply fixed vectors. So first, I will start with uh, some backgrounds. So let's begin with basics. These are all well known, but I'm just going to briefly remind you what are those. And when we say a symplectic manifold, it could be in any dimension, and we do not that in this way. Here M is a smooth manifold, and it's equipped with a closed non-degenerate differential two-form omega. So we know that all symplectic manifolds are even dimensional, and they are all orientable. And in this talk, we, we are in dimension four, of course. And let's say that we have a close simply connected and symplectic form manifold X. And we have two invariants assigned to our manifolds. The first one is C1 squared. And this is the square of its first chunk loss. And it satisfies this equality. It is equal to two times order characteristic plus three times signature of the manifold. By the way, this is the signature. It's coming from the entire section form. If you don't know, it is a numerical invariant, which is B2 plus minus B2 minus. And chi H is the holomorphic order characteristic, and it is E plus sigma over four. And based on those, we have a geography chart. And I think later this week, Andras is gonna mention the geography problem. So you will learn more about that. But let me briefly uh, introduce here, because I need some parts. So, this is the chart in which we have C1 squared and chi h axis. And on the chart, we have special lines. And the first one is the notar line. And it is given by this equality. And there is also half notar line, C1 squared equals chi h minus three. And in my work, I have constructed manifolds lying between these two regions. And there are more special lines the other one is, for instance, PMY line in short. And if you consider minimal complex surfaces of general type, then for those, we know that BMI and motor inequalities hold. So the invariants are lying between these two lines. Then we say that such a surface S is lying between these two lines. But when you consider synthetic manifolds, it's not the case. Uh, we don't have such upper and lower bounds. Let me show you the picture. Here you see this axis, C1 squared, and this is the chi h axis. And this is the BMY line. This is quite special, and there are many interesting open problems. Later, you may learn about them. And this is the motor line. And you know that below this motor line, there are infinitely many exotic form manifolds. We have both synthetic and also non synthetic ones, and there are infinitely many of them. And in my work, I have made constructions between this motor and this half motor lines. And I will skip this part. I'm sure uh, you will see them later. And let me give some notations and conventions. So first of all, we know that uh, blow, blow ups and bounds can be done symplectically. It is thanks to McLaugh. And in my work, I do all blow ups in the symplectic category. And next, uh, I'm going to talk about Kodaira's work. So he classified uh, singular fibers in relatively minimal and elliptic vibrations. So here is the picture that he considers. T2 is a generic fiber, which is non-singular, and S is the total space of the vibration, and R is the base, and R is a Riemann surface. So S is a four manifold, which is also complex. And he showed that there are nine types of singularities. There are exactly nine types, and either you can have a cusp or a model singularity or configurations of minus two spheres. And in my work, I mostly work with IN singular fibers, and IN fiber is a configuration of N many two spheres, and every sphere has seven dissections minus two, and they are arranged in this way. Here you see the lines, each line is a complex line. It means that it is a two severe or rational curve, whichever you like. And the seven intersections are all minus two. And some brief background on cyber Witten invariants. Yesterday, we have seen some parts of it from Andrej's lectures, but I need to give a few more definitions. Uh, later, we will see more. 
So let's say that we have a smooth, closed, and oriented four manifold, and B2 plus of X is greater than one. And I put an invariant, it is this integer valued function. It is defined from this set onto Z or Z. And the defining set is uh, the set of these cohomology classes. And they are equal to the second type of Whitney class in mod two. And when we consider such cohomology classes, um, let's take some K and we call it a basic class of X if it doesn't vanish under the cyber Newton function. And for the set of basic classes of our manifold, we use this notation. And one more terminology. Let's say you have a simply connected and smooth form manifold, and we call it of simple type. Uh, if each basic class k satisfies this equation. So we want k squared to be equal to c1 squared. And these are some words that I'm going to use in my talk. And we also have some very useful theorems here. I'm just going to state two of them. The first one is what we call generalized blow up formula. It is due to Fintuchel Stern. Mm, it is more general, but here let's just consider the blow up case. Basically, if you have a manifold of simple type and simply connected, and, and we blow up that at endpoints, and then we know how to compute the basic classes of the resulting manifold. And I will have to skip details. And we have another result. Let's remember elliptic surfaces. Again, last week Andras talked about them and we all know about these. For these special types of four manifolds, we also know how to compute their basic classes. And again, it is the theorem of Kintushas term. And precisely they give us how to compute their basic classes. Um, here F, for instance, F is the homology class of the five. And we consider integers satisfying these properties. And we take the class KF and we take its Poincare dual. And the set of such classes gives us uh, the basic classes of EM. And in my work, I have used these results. And there are more, but I have to skip others. And let me talk about mouse type surgeries. <laughs> Before them, uh, again, I'm going to remind you rational blowdown. Again, last week, Andras talked about them. And these are operations due to Fintuchas Stern. And we have generalizations of them due to Park, Stipschitz, Slavo, and Wall, and Buchwald, Stipschitz. And remember, in this operation, uh, we consider uh, configurations of two spheres having certain self intersections. They are coming from uh, continued fraction expansion. And uh, we take out the neighborhood of that plumbing, that configuration, and we replace that by a rational homology for ball. And that is that operation. And star surgeries are defined similarly. And Karakut and Starkston introduced these operations. And these are again synthetic operations. And here is the main idea. Mm, we are cutting out a star shaped plumbing of synthetic two spheres lying inside a synthetic form and bolt. And then we replace that with a convex synthetic filling, which has cytic the smaller or like characteristic. So here is the main difference. In the rational blowdown, the part that we are putting back is rational homology for ball. But in star surgeries, uh, the part that we are putting back is not necessarily a rational homology for ball. It is a certain type synthetic manifold having boundary. And also, Starkson showed that infinitely many star surgeries are not equivalent to any sequences of generalized synthetic rational blowdowns. Infinitely many of them are different. And in my work, I have worked with four types of star surgeries. There are many others, but I just worked with four of them. And here's the first one, QR surgery. And Q is this configuration that you see in the picture. So it is this configuration here, every dot, uh, U0, U1, U2, these are all two spheres, synthetic two spheres. 
And when there's an edge between them, it means that the two spheres are transversely intersecting. And these numbers are self intersections of these spheres. And on the other hand, R is a particular simply connected and synthetic four manifold. And it has much smaller Euler characteristic. And moreover, in their paper, Karakurt and Staxton uh, gave the precise Kirby calculus and left chest vibration descriptions of these synthetic films. So their topology, everything is well understood. And for details, you can see their paper. And then they define this operation. So we are replacing the neighborhood of this configuration Q, and we replace that by the following R, and it is what they call QR surgery. And here there are many technicalities, many details, but I'm skipping and I just gave the summary here. Um, for instance, for the spinning R, they consider the boundary of R. On the boundary, there is the induced contact structure, and they show that it is contact amorphic to the boundary of plumbing Q with its canonical contact structure. And there are many you know, details, but I'm just summarizing uh, some parts here. And there are more types, but I think I will be very quick. So K is this configuration, and uh, L is the corresponding simplicity filling. And here, L is not simply connected. And again, we know all its properties, and they define <coughs> KL surgeries. And S2T2 surgery is another one. We have this configuration, and we have T2. Uh, another synthetic form and fault. Again, it is not simply connected, and we know their properties. And we have this S2T2 surgery. Lastly, I have UV surgery here, and U is this configuration. It is larger than others. I mean, oil like characteristic is bigger, and V is the synthetic filling. It has much smaller oil like characteristic. And again, we can replace U with V and they define this operation. Now I can start with my constructions. Okay, here is the main result. Uh, I showed that there are simply connected and minimal synthetic form manifolds. Each of them has an exotic smooth structure and each of them has one side back within basic class up to sign. And some of my manifolds are lying on the multi line and some of them are between the multi and half multi lines. And I obtained them by star surgeries and by using complex singularities, the I N singular fibers that I mentioned at the beginning. And I also constructed um, configurations. They consist of more than one I N type the fibers in the rational elliptic surfaces geometrically. It means that there is no mapping class group in this work. Okay, I will try to give the proof idea in the rest of my talk. And let's start with constructions of configurations of I and singularities in rational elliptic surfaces. First of all, when I say rational elliptic surface, it is just CP2 blown up at nine points. And there is a minor difference whether there is a section or not. But in this work, all of them have sections. So I will skip those parts. So basically, we have a section, and these are our elliptic surfaces, the first one, E1. Inside E1, uh, I will construct config configurations of IN type fibers. And moreover, uh, I will work with tensors, a cubic tensor inside CP2. It means that it is a one dimensional linear system of cubics. And by Bezo, we know that it should have nine base points counted with multiplicity. I will show you some pictures for tensors so you will get the idea, I, I think. And so I will skip these parts. These are about whether there is a section or not. So I, I'm going to skip those. OK, let me now mention this part. In my work, I have constructed these three configurations. And for instance, let's look at this first one. Here, this notation means that there is one singular fiber of type I6 and one of type I3 and one I2 fiber. And I constructed this configuration inside our E1, and I set up with a specific pencil inside CP2, and then I obtained this. For the second one, I start with a different pencil, 
when I obtained this one. For the last one, again, I start with a different pencil and I constructed this configuration. And today I will try to give you the construction of this first part. And let's begin with this. So first I start with a pencil P lying in CP2, it's given by Naruki. And this pencil has two generators. And the first one is aluminum Q. L is a line, Q is a degree two curve conic. So it is a reducible cubic. And C is irreducible cubic, it is a degree three curve. And this pencil has two base points. And at one of those, C has a node. It has a nodal singularity, it has a double point. And then he gives another member of that pencil, C1. And it is another irreducible degree three curve. He gives all of the defining polynomials. So here each curve is a zero set of a polynomial. And he gives us all of these equations. And this C1 has a knot at the other base point. And when we say base point, every member must pass through these points. And so then I sketch his pencil in my work. Um, here, while sketching, actually, uh, we need to be careful. So let's look at um, this blue part. This is the curve C1. And it has the singularity at the point Q. And it is passing to other point P. And when you look at this entire section, and the one branch of that cubic is transversal to the others. So for this vertical branch that you see, the entire section matrix of that is one. And when you look at the other branch, it is tangent to the green line, and it is also tangent to the black part. So for this other branch, uh, for this part, the multiplicity is two. So in total, the entire section multiplicity is three. And I just denote in this way. And moreover, if you look at, again, at this point Q, the green and blacks and black curves are intersecting each other with multiplicity three. From the equations, uh, there is a way to compute that and we can compute. Actually, Mariki also mentions in his paper. And similarly, we see same pattern at this point T. One branch of the cubic is transversal and the other branch is intersecting others with multiplicity five. Anyways, after understanding this, then I start with this pencil and then I obtain my configuration and I proceed here as in the paper of Skipschitz and Zabo. So let me try to give uh, the main idea. There are many steps, but first, when I start with my pencil, first I do blow ups at the points P and Q, and that resolves the singularities of our two cubics. So they are resolved. And we are getting exceptional divisors, E1 and E2, they are in red. And we get proper transforms of our curves. So I keep track of all homology classes. And I also keep track of the intersection multiplicities. After one blow up, for this blue part, C1 tilde, it intersect others transversely. But for a green and black part here, they are tangent. So I uh, just keep track of those numbers. And I do the same at the other intersection point. And moreover, initially, the total homology classes of three parts are equal to each other, 3H, 3H, 3H. But after we blow up, they are not equal anymore. And we need to equate them. And here I'm following uh, Stipschitz and Zobo. To equate them, I'm including this E1 to the blue part, and I include E2 to the black part. Now again, uh, their total classes become equal. And then I continue blowing up and I obtain the second picture. Um, uh, until I resolve, I proceed in this way. And lastly, I get this last picture here. And here we get two sections, the red curves E5 and E9. And the blue part gives us uh, I3 fiber, I just put labels. <laughs> and the green part is I2 and the black part is I6 fiber. And each component here is a minus two CPU. Moreover, the total classes of black, green, and blue parts are all equal to each other. So I visit it up here and we get this configuration. And then uh, I constructed other configurations. For this one, I sit up with a different pencil. 
And in the same way I proceed, then I obtain I5 and I45. Here you see more sections. And this is the second construction. And in the other one, I set out with a different line arrangement. And out of this, I obtain two I5 fibers. And I'm going very fast. I'm sorry about that. But feel free to stop anytime you like. And next, by using these three configurations, I constructed our star shaped plums. Remember, we have, uh, I mean, at the beginning, I talked about four different types of star surgeries. And in each of them, we have star shaped plumbings. And I constructed each of them by using these configurations. And I have some lemmas. For instance, this first one. Uh, I proved that the plumbing Q synthetically embeds inside this manifold. And I proved this in three different ways. First, I have used this configuration. Remember, it lies inside E1. And then by fiber summing, I'm passing to larger manifold E5. And then uh, by using synthetic resolutions and blowups, I obtain this Q inside this manifold. And I also prove in, uh, in by using other configurations. And then uh, I have other lemmas for other plumbings. And for plumbing K and S2, I constructed them inside E675. And for U, I constructed that inside E5 below not at three points. And after constructing them, now we can apply uh, star surgeries. And this is the first part. So these are constructions of simply connected minimal and synthetic and also exotic uh, four manifolds on the multi line. And here is the theorem. Uh, I constructed the manifold X. Again, it is simply connected, minimal, synthetic, exotic, and it has one side by written basic class of the sign. And it is lying on the notar line. And I obtained that from the QR star survey. And here is how I define my manifold. So remember in the lemma, we proved that this, we didn't prove, but I showed you that uh, Q lies inside this manifold. And then uh, by QR surgery, I define the manifold X. Then I compute its invariance, and we see that it is lying on the motor line. They satisfy the motor equality. And then I prove all other properties. Maybe minimality is uh, the part that we should talk about. So let me briefly give the main idea. So to prove that my manifold is minimal, I first check which basic classes of the starting manifold X tends to X. And we know the cyber written basic classes of this manifold. Uh, up to sign, we have these classes. And here, F and E1 are homology classes. These are Poincare rules of uh, homology classes of the regular fiber and exceptions here. And then uh, I use the dimension of the cyber written moduli space, and I eliminated these three classes up to sign. I showed that they do not descend to X as a basic class. And then, uh, on the other hand, we know that this top class must extend to X as a basic class. It is due to tops. And we know that this does X extend because X is synthetic. And next, I prove that this M extends to X uniquely. So that part was. Uh, important, and I prove that it extends to my manifold in a unique way. Therefore, we get that X has one cyber written basic class up to sign. And then, by the blow formula, uh, we prove that X is minimal. So these are the basic uh, steps. And then I have some other theorems, but they are uh, similar. For instance, this is the second construction lying on the motor line. And here I start with a different manifold and I apply another type of star surgery. However, at the end, I see that they are both homeomorphic to this manifold, but they are not diffeomorphic to this manifold. And I anticipate that they are diffeomorphic to each other, but I don't know because I obtained them in different ways. Probably they are diffeomorphic, but I don't know. 
whether it is true or not. And also in the literature, of course, there are exotic copies of this manifold and they are obtained in different ways by using different methods. But here I'm using star surgeries and I don't know whether my exotic manifolds are diffeomorphic to those exotic manifolds or not. So we cannot distinguish them. Uh, at least have written and all other known invariants do not work. And yeah, there are some open problems in here. And then I have other constructions. Here I constructed manifolds between motor and half motor lines by using different types of star surgeries, but I'm not gonna take too much time here. Here they are of different type. And lastly, I also constructed a manifold, again, simply connected minimal, you know, having all those properties. Um, I obtained that by the UV star surgery, and it is an exotic copy of three CP2 connected some 17 CP2 bar. And this was the main idea. And I think that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks, Sumeira.